Hi, this is a very basic lesson in how to draw a realistic human face. All you're going to need for this is some simple tools like this paper, an ordinary pencil and an eraser, and the ability to follow some simple guidelines. So let's get started. When you're drawing a face, or for that matter when you're drawing anything, you're basically uh, honing in on the basic shapes that the thing you're trying to draw are made up of. So the first thing we want to do is draw the shape of the head. All heads, basically, are ovals. So you draw a large oval. Remember, it doesn't take talent to do this kind of stuff. It just takes uh, knowing your basic shapes and being able to decide which ones go where. So that's the shape of the head, an oval. Now what we want to do is split this oval into particular sections. We want to draw a very light guideline going down the middle. This is going to help us get all the parts of the face in the right places. Then we want to draw another very light guideline going straight across the middle. Now I'm drawing these darker than you would normally draw them so that you can see them clearly on the camera. But you should draw these guidelines so lightly that you almost have trouble seeing them. Once we have this face divided horizontally in half, then we want a couple more guidelines. We're going to take this bottom half and divide it in half. We don't need a full guideline for this, just a little mark that shows where the middle of that bottom section is. And then we might want to take the top half and do the same thing. Make a little mark about where the middle of that top section is. Now these are going to show us where to put all the important parts of the face. This middle guideline is going to show us where almost everything in the face goes. This bottom guideline right here is going to show us where the nose would stop and this top guideline up here is going to show us where the hair might come down on the forehead. So now we've got all our guidelines. Let's get into drawing the actual face. We'll start with the nose. The top of the nose goes right here in the middle of the head where these two guidelines cross. The nose is not much more than a U-shape. This isn't technically a shape, I know, but it's an easy way to remember it. The nose starts at that middle guideline and comes all the way down to this bottom guideline. Then you go back up. It's also right in the middle of where that vertical guideline is. After you have the shape of the nose, then you're going to want to put the nostrils on. They're all the way down here at the bottom of the nose, and there are just a couple of loops or ovals, circles, that come out from the side of that bottom of the nose. They can actually be a number of shapes. I just use the oval circle because that's the most uh, common. That's pretty much it for the nose. It's not a big deal. By the way, you should be doing all of these things very lightly, partly so that you can correct your mistakes when you make them, and partly so that you can have the opportunity to tweak some of these parts of the face as, as you go along. If you draw really dark, it's kind of hard to make changes. The next thing we're going to do is the eyes. The eyes go right on that middle guideline. The eyes are basically ovals, and they fill up pretty much that space between the nose and the side of the head. So a couple of ovals for the eyes. Those ovals for the eyes are a little specialized in that they have points on either end of them. Next part of the eye is the iris. That's a large circle inside that eye. The iris is the colored part of your eye. It's either brown or green or blue. That's the iris. Right dead in the center of the iris, always in the center of the iris, is the pupil, another fairly large circle. And the pupil is black.
Those are parts of the eyes we notice right away. But there are other smaller parts, like for instance here in the corner, right by where the nose is, you have the tear duct. It's kind of an oval shape right there in the corner of the eye. Going along the top of the eye, you have the eyelashes. It's a series of short lines that goes all the way across the top of that eye. You actually have eyelashes on the top and bottom of your eye. But the uh, eyelashes on the bottom of your eye are normally so short and fine that at a glance we don't really notice them on people. So you can leave those off or you can go ahead and put the shorter finer idea for the eyelashes on the bottom of your eye down there. Now here at the top of the eye also we have the eyelid that goes from this corner of the eye all the way to that corner of the eye and it's basically just an arc that goes over the eye. From one corner to the other corner. That's the eyelid. Next we're going to do the eyebrow. That's over the eye. You can pretty much draw the eyebrow any way you want as long as you put it over the eye. And that's pretty much for a basic eye. Now that we have the nose done right here at the middle guideline and the eyes done right there at the middle guideline, we're going to draw the ears. The ears also are on the middle guideline. See what I mean by most of the face is on that middle guideline? The ears are on the middle guideline. The top of the ear is at the middle guideline. The ear comes down from there. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to have the ears come down about as far as a nose does, but people have different size ears. So there will be some variance in that. The ears are basically just ovals. Now, inside the ear, you have the cartilage. And an easy way to remember the cartilage is that it looks like a curvy capital letter R. Now that's not strictly speaking true, but it's an easy way to remember it so that you can get into ballpark. The best way to uh, get to drawing cartilage is to look at people's ears and see what shapes are that you see there. They'll be different for every person that you see. So now we have the eyes, the nose, and the ears. Now we're going to do the mouth. We could make some particular measurements for the mouth, but like I said, I want to keep this simple. So now we have the nose here. We can make the mouth simple by making it below the nose. Not very far below the nose, just below it. And uh, mouth is going to go out, draw a line for it. It's going to go out pretty much to where the middle of the eyes are. But again, people have different size mouths. So that would be the line that separates the lips, but we also want to draw the lips. So above the line, you want to draw the upper lip. You want to put a little dent right there at the vertical guideline, and then curve the lip outward to the edge of the mouth. Now below the mouth, below that line of the mouth, you want to have the lower lip. So again, from the edge of that line you drew for the mouth, you're just going to make a curve that goes underneath it to the other side. And there you have a simple mouth. Next what we want to do is put the neck on this face. The neck is almost as wide as the head. So you're just going to really draw two lines so that they're almost as wide as the head, and they're not very long either. At the bottom of the neck, you want to draw the shoulders. The shoulders are fairly straight lines, 
but they come down at a slight angle from the neck. The last thing of real importance here is the hair. The hair, as some people think, the hair, some people think the hair goes at the top of the head. That's not really correct. The hair is on the top of the head, but it also comes down the forehead some. It also comes all the way down to the ears on the side. These are the things you have to remember about the hair. First of all, this line here that splits the top half of the head in half. That's our hairline. The hair is going to come somewhere in the neighborhood of this line. It could be a little higher. It could be a little lower. But it's going to come somewhere in the neighborhood of that line. That line right here is there to remind you that the hair does not just sit on the top of the head. So I have the hairline come down to about this line, the top guideline. Also have the hair come down to the ears on the side. Then you want to decide how far the hair will stand up off of the head itself. draw doing that. Now the hair can come longer than the ears. It can come as long as you want it to be. I'm going to stop at that point though. Now we have all the basic parts of the head. What we need to do now is use our eraser. So you're going to turn your pencil around and the first thing you're going to want to erase, because it will give you the most trouble if you don't, is this line inside the hair for where the top of the head was. Remember, we should have been drawing all of this very, very lightly. That makes it easier to erase things when we make a mistake or when we're done with them. Like we're done with the top of this head. We want to be able to get rid of it. So remember to draw your picture very, very lightly. Much lighter than I'm doing. I'm doing this so that you can see it. If I were doing this for myself, my picture would be so light that I would have difficulty seeing, it, difficulty seeing it. So you get rid of that line for the top of the head. So now you have just the hair there. Also, get rid of your guidelines. Another good reason to draw lightly because we don't want to have a big X sitting in the middle of the person's face when we're done. And we're pretty covered there. Now what you want to do after you have all your guidelines erased is you want to go over nice and dark the lines you want to keep, that you want people to see. That includes in particular this jaw line. You definitely want people to see it. How do you know that? Just look at anybody. You can see their jaw line very definitely. It's very clear to you. So things that are very clear to you when you look at people, you want to keep those. Things that are not, you might want to uh, fuss with. For instance, the nose. You may not see all these very definite lines in a person's nose. So you can play around with what parts of that nose you want to keep visible to the people looking at your pictures. So you may only want parts of the nostrils. You may only want part of this main part of the nose. And you may want parts to be not so visible. It's up to you. Same thing goes for the lips. You may not want this entire line visible for the lips. Or you may. That's your choice. Same thing for the upper lip.
on the eye, you may not want to have this very definite line for the eyelid. You may want to soften the line of that eye by making the line for the eyelid somewhat broken, like that, by basically just removing part of it. I'm not saying you have to do this, but these are choices you can make. Now you definitely want to see the space under the eyelashes, the top of the eye. But you may want to soften the line for the bottom of the eye. You may be able to see very little of that depending on um, the person you're drawing. Uh, personally, I think I want to keep it the way it is right now. You're going to want to go over the neck. You may or may not want to think about how you're going to do the collar of the person's shirt, supposing they're wearing one. And you may want to decide what you want to do with the hair. You may want to leave it a shape like this and then color it a particular color. Or you may want to work some lines into the hair to give us an idea of which way the hair is growing. If you do put lines in the hair like this, just be certain that when you draw the lines that they go in the direction the hair would be growing. You have to think about that. Because if you made the lines doing oddball things that hair would not do on a person's face, then you kind of lose the idea, the realism of the picture. For instance, I would not want to make the hair on the top of the head going side to side because people's hair on the top of their head simply does not go side to side. Even if they decide to comb their hair side to side, it still really doesn't look like it goes side to side. It looks like it was forced in that direction. It looks like it grows out of the skull and then turns. So you need to think about what direction you would make lines in the hair so that the lines you make actually work for you instead of just taking up space. There you go. There's a basic portrait.